Hey there, this is Darren, founder of Density. Welcome to Density Insights, where we interview real estate experts for their expertise and opinions and help you to learn more about all things real estate. We had the pleasure to interview Joe Ladder, a founding partner of GNW Properties, Snow Dog Village, Snow Dog Charlotte's, and Raku Ichu Residence. Today, we interview Joe Lauder on his experience of dealing with COVID and how he carried the project through this difficult time. Snowdog Village is a completed property of 42 apartment that had sustained buyer interest for a number of years. Joe also presents over two other projects in the planning and development stage, such as the ski resort of Niseko, Japan. He and the company strive to give individuals the opportunity to purchase value for money ski properties. In this episode, Joe talks about managing hospitality type properties, establishing an online presence, and tips for the real estate industry to persist in this new COVID norm. Hope you enjoy the show. As always, you can find everything we mentioned in this episode in the show notes, including our thoughts, more about the guests, and all the tips and tricks. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button like you mean it to get our regular updates. Now, take a deep breath and buckle up for the show. Hope you enjoy. So, hey, Joe. Hey, how are you? Very good. Thanks for coming in. Oh, thanks for having me, Darren. I remember we met around November, last November. Yeah, it was yeah, through Gordon. Yeah, and it's interesting because he told me that there's a guy that I should interview with. Yeah. And that's you, and then it's, it's great because... But he said to me, I was on a walk with him, and he said I was on a hike with him. He said, you've got to meet this guy, Darren. He's really, really, really? good. Yeah, oh, yeah, he did. That. Yeah, he was... Uh, very complimentary of you. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, and I watched the show as well, it's really good. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And then obviously that, you know, I'm kind of a geek for this whole real estate stuff. And then I always want to find someone to talk about hospitality, especially like part-time for this. Yes. And then um, looking back to you studying about your background, I've always seen that like you're from an athlete and somehow become a real estate guy in hospitality and how do you consistent about it? So, so what's the story behind that? Yes, I mean, it's a strange, I mean, started off in life as a jockey and then ended up in, 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 uh, as a, in a re- real estate developing. It's a, it's a, it's a strange story. Yeah, so I started, I was a sportsman when I was younger. Uh, I did everything from pentathlon tri- uh, uh, to triathlon, tra- tra- I, uh, three day eventing. I even boxed. And I did that because people laughed at me when I said I'd do it. So I went, right, OK, I used to do it. And I trained and trained and trained for it. I really trained and ended up being uh, quite good. I, I won, I won a, a big competition at the Grosvenor House Hotel in London and, um, and, then, and then moved into horse racing and became a jockey, a professional jockey for 11 years. And then injury curtailed that. Uh, I broke my back. So then I had to go, right, OK, I've got to start doing something else, which was pretty I've got to be honest with you. I remember coming out the doctors, well, the, the specialist, and I remember it clearly. And I was thinking, what the hell am I going to do now? What do I do? But I was lucky because of the sports. People asked me to come and speak at after dinner speech. You know, corporate people asked me to come and speak. And so I, I started that and I built a business around that, which grew and grew until I was starting to do international events around the world for likes of Oracle, Zurich, people like that. And and from that then I was staying in hotels and I hated hotels. I really, really hated the traditional hotel. And actually at the time there was a Ascot Group. I don't know if you've come across Ascot Group. They're a Singaporean company. Um, and they and they did this, they started this concept where you could stay in a stay in a hotel room, managed like a hotel, but you had a kitchen. And I loved that could go and then I could have breakfast in the morning in, in my own and I could do, I could have the evening and you know, if I wanted to eat at home, because I'm a homeboy really, I love, love my home cooked food. And, um, and I'm being married to an Indonesian who's an amazing chef as well, I, that's perfect. So that's, that's, then the concept started happening. Then I moved to Spain, I sold the business, moved to Spain. And um, Spain was again interesting because you in there they, had, they were selling like you can't believe. And I got involved in, with a developer over there, which was really interesting. And they had a project, a huge project, and they were selling apartments, but no one managed it. So I, I actually bought five apartments in this place, but then I had the nightmare furnishing it, renting it. It was a disaster. It was really, really difficult. 
really, I mean, really caused problems for me. And in, in the end, um, through divorce and, and the recession, I decided to leave Spain and I moved to Asia. And for the first time, I suddenly started seeing through the guy that brought me over how actually a resort can be run, but also have individual owners. Because most hotels just have one owner. You know, you know most hotels will have a, an owner who will own the building and then they, and then they have the management who is the Hilton or, who, or the Park Hyatt or whoever. Well, well, in this case, this guy, he managed it himself and he sold the individual units. And I was like, this is the first time I've really seen. It probably went on in Asia more, but it didn't go on in Europe at that stage. And it, and it was the first time I'd seen this is how it should be done. And then from that, I learned and I grew and, that, and, this, and, and have evolved and been involved in, I think, like six or seven projects, very similar, who are also all still going. They're all award winning, uh, winning awards for, you know, for from TripAdvisor and uh, various other things. And uh, and then and then I, I met Nico, uh, Nicholas Pullings, who who asked me to come and get involved with Snowdog and with everything else that was happening in Niseko. And I saw what was Niseko. I mean, obviously we loved Niseko. I mean, you've been to Hokkaido, you were telling me earlier, and you love, actually you've driven the whole length. You've done more than I have, I tell you. Yeah, I've never driven the whole length. It's one of the plans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely one of the plans. But so it was, so I, I was like, okay, I love skiing. I skied from an early age and I was like, okay, I really like this concept. But then I was like, okay, how do we improve the concept? And, uh, and, and, you know that's what we've been we've been doing over the last uh, few years, and it and it is improving. It's doing really well and for our owners. You know our family of owners, and that's the important thing. You've got to, you're, when you buy something, you as an as a as an investor as an owner, you've got to feel like you're being looked after, and you're getting value going forwards. And you're and if you feel as an owner that you're in partnership with the developer, in partnership with a management company and you're part of that going forward. You know that they're going to be working and trying for you, and that's what we do. That's how we work. How's it like? Well, except you, Darren, obviously you've worked in the industry, so you know how hard it is. Yes, I mean, it's a good question because as, as a, we, we are slightly different to a hotel uh, owner because mo most of the hotel hotels they have one owner that they're working for, whereas we have a situation where we have sold each, we've sold it units to individual investors, so they have the opportunity to have their own holiday home. Um, so our job is to make sure that we're getting a good return for them, which is also means that as owners as well, we get a return ourselves. So what we've done is we've set up, unlike anywhere else, I haven't come across this in the second particularly, where we have a um, general manager who's working on our behalf. When I say us, we're talking about the owners and us as a company. And her, her role is to work to improve the, the management company, which is Vacation Seco, which is actually owned by Richard Lee, believe it or not. But I just want to know, like, what is your way to mitigate the, the problem at the moment? And how do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, we're all going through difficult times at the moment. Uh, you know, we're in winter at the moment. And what follows winter? Spring and summer. Yes, exactly. So we're going through dark times at the moment, but there is light at the end of the tunnel. Um, I mean, winter is longer than we would normally have it, but uh, we definitely can see that stuff will, you know, as, as time comes, the COVID uh, vaccine comes out and people start traveling again, obviously there's going to be a big surge in travel. What we're really looking at at the moment is now, okay, what, what can we do to adapt and change for now? And so the first thing that we did, the biggest issue we had was the summer. Okay, how do we fill the summer? We had a management company who didn't want to work because the government were paying them not to work. We're owners, we're not getting paid. So what do we do? So straight away, we um, employed uh, Rena, who's our general manager. And then we changed the website. We took control of the social media. We took control of the hotel license as well as a company. And, and then we opened up ourselves. So we went, okay. And by September, we actually had 
believe it or not, 200 guests staying there for a long weekend, which was unheard of. We never had anyone, hardly anyone staying during the summer before. And we gone from a standing start, having never, you know, we weren't the ones managing this, to managing it and doing that. Which, which means, you know, as I said before, if you don't, if you don't make change, you don't get different results. And, and that's exactly what we did. So then we looked at how we're going to go through the winter. I mean, the reality is we, we knew that there was going to be no international tourists. We knew that we had to look at the domestic market. So we then went to a, uh, a company who had a big, better record at this, which is a company called Vacation Seco, uh, which is owns Richard Lee is the owner of it. And that's not why we did it. it. It's because of what the company could do. And, and then we've had another hurdle now. So Japan has now been closed down. It's much even harder to travel. So we've gone from being booked, canceled, booked, canceled. But what we're doing, we're building social media, we're building, uh, we're building following, um, we're staying open so that when it does happen, because a lot of places are closing, but we're staying open for when it does happen, we're there. Because at the end of the day, the cost of running our hotel for the owners is the same, open or shut. There is a cost of running. I mean, when we got people in there, it goes up a bit, but we've got income coming. But when people aren't in there, it's the same. So whatever they're, whatever it, the, for us, it makes no difference. And so what we've got to do is look at how we can make the best of what we're doing. And, and what COVID's done for us actually has been a really positive thing. We've made change that is gonna really change things. And I reckon one of the things that, I mean, give us some facts here. Is that okay to give you some facts? Okay, so our occupancy was at about 26%. And that was based on fully booked for two and a half months of the year over, over ski season. We project by 2023 that we'll be 60% occupied year round if we can continue building the domestic market that we are. Because at the end of the day, we one of the reasons for the location of where we are is that a million tourists a year come to five minutes away from our, our hotel. And that's to a place called Milk Kobo, which is a very famous um, like restaurant, um, cafe kind of place where the locals love. But they only come for a day. Whereas we go, okay, how do we, how do we change this? Let's look and see whether they can come for one or two days. And so the first thing we did was make our hotel dog friendly, which makes sense. It's called Snow Dog, but we made it dog friendly. And straight away, our, our Instagram following doubled uh, because it's dogs. And, and then we filled it. We, we had 200 guests staying, we had 38 dogs staying. And dogs are paying as well. So we're making more money. <laughs> <laughs> All for our owners. <laughs> Maybe I should have a dog with you too. So you have yeah, a dog. take a dog. I mean, I've got... I've got two rescue dogs. Uh, you know, that's one of the re one of the charities that I work with, Tails. I've got two amazing. One's a little Chihuahua, and one's a big poodle. Uh, and they come walking. They do all these thirty k. If I could give you a megaphone, megaphone, yeah. Podcast around the world. What was your message towards them? Like, what do you want for them for this time? But to people, well, just what I've just said. I mean, the most important thing is to know that we're only we're going through winter, and spring will follow. There, there's it will follow and then summer and then autumn and we're reaping the rewards. You know, this is this is what happens. I mean, the thing is to be able to adapt and change for now, but be looking to the future because it will change. And when it changes, it's going to burst. I mean, I'm looking at from a personal point of view, I'm always looking at hotel chains like we talked to Core, Marriott and these kind of thing, these kind of companies. And they are expanding like you cannot believe i mean i think it's i think it was a core who are opening 100 new hotels in asia pacific really? alone yeah in 2021 unbelievable marry it the same similar going i mean that and and then some of the i mean even four seasons here i don't know whether you've seen what they're doing their um renovation project is just unbelievable so these guys are not spending money because they don't think spring and summer and autumn is gonna, gonna, not going to come. It's going to come. I mean, it will come and um, people will then start traveling again. People are cooped up. We, we are, The little bit of, um, you know, information we're getting from people coming through the, ours is on a small scale to the bigger guys, but 
we're, we're, we're seeing everybody. It's like they're wanting to book to come. Like next year, they want to book to come and stay at the hotel. We're getting booking now for summer. Um, I mean, we're, um, that, that's domestic market, but we're, we're already getting bookings for the summer. We're getting people wanting to book for the winter for next year because they want to be in there for where it's ready. I mean, all last year we were getting people wanting to book, but we couldn't take bookings from international people because we knew that travel wasn't going to happen. So it's, you know, we know the winter's going to come back, you know, we, for, for us in the summer, you know, the, the winter ski season is going to come back from an international perspective. Um, but what we're really building on is the domestic market, which is, at the end of the day, Japan is a big country. There's a lot of people and, um, you know, they like their food and they like, uh, you know, they, li they like their dogs. That's one of the reasons we looked at that. That's and, and um, you know, we, we see that being quite an important part of our future ongoing for us and our family of owners. And yes, we're quite excited, actually. I, I, got, I mean, I've got to say, I get it go up and down. Um, I go up and down with, you know, I said to you before, I go, sometimes I feel despondent because borders have been closed again. But then I see something else come up and something else happen and we get a little bit and then I feel, oh no, this will be okay, you know, so. This sounds like you are doing a lot of things more than you expected for the past year, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, again, as, as you say, you know, you don't adapt, you die. Um, and this, um, this, this year through COVID, Oh my God. So you're in a situation where you're going, okay, unfortunately you can't employ all the people or can't spend the money that you don't want to spend that money because you've got to keep, you know, you know, we knew this was going to happen last for a long time. We, 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 we predicted a year, but obviously it's going to be probably a year and a half, maybe, maybe even up to two. So we, we, we were right. Okay. Let's pull our buckles in and let's, 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 ride the wave but let's stay on it you know kind of thing so you know i've learned things like I've, all the marketing start side of things we've uh, i've learned how to you know all the seo side of things build making videos we've got you know we've got quite a big youtube uh database i mean we don't have a huge followings but we have quite a big uh all, all the bank of videos that i've made mostly myself and then we we've uh we've Instagram has increased double the size because of that. I mean, even like LinkedIn, we're starting to get a lot of like 30 new followers uh, a month, maybe 40 a month. And which I know is not a lot, but it's it's building every month. And we're doing that through continual content, and continual engagement, continual updates of what we're doing and also what's going on within the industry. You know, some of the, like I talked about the Hill, you know, the Marriott and what they're doing and of course. So, all of this we're trying to show and give to people as you know listen there is life at the end of the, you know at the end of the tunnel and um your personal notes and you talk about charity too would you mind like you know, telling me more about it because i think it's kind of interesting to learn what everyone's doing yeah i'm i'm really pleased you asked that yeah it's <laughs> so this year has been uh difficult for everybody and the charities have really struggled as well and um and for me on a personal note, I just wanted to start giving back. I wasn't traveling. I wasn't, I wasn't able to go to uh, Niseko for the summer. So it was more of a case of, right, okay, what can I do to help people? What can I do that matters? Um, you know, and, 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 and along with what I have as a passion, which is I love hiking. You know, I love being up in the mountains, hiking, running kind of thing. And I was thinking, right, okay, I want to do some challenges. Okay, if I'm going to do a challenge, let me let me uh, let me raise some money for somebody. Let me not just raise money, but get away in awareness of whatever that charity is. You know what the charity is, and fundamentally, um, I've I've done I've done it for two. The main one that I'm really focused on is a charity called Stop, which is Stop Trafficking of People. Uh, it's a it's I'm really close to my heart. The company is an amazing company. They're that well amazing charity. They're very small, they're very boutique, they're very hands-on, um, just an incredible charity and they're helping people. Um, they're, but they're struggling with money, you know, they don't get any grants from the government, it's very difficult for them. So so what I, I it was my birthday, 50th birthday coming up, I was like, okay, what am I going to do for my 50th, you know, something, something mad. So I decided to do a 50 kilometer triathlon and um, anyway, 
the day that I was doing it, the first part of it is biking up in the mountains. So we're doing mountain biking and we, uh, Chima Wan, which is one of the hardest biking trails in Hong Kong, probably one of the toughest everywhere. Um, and I'd only been on a bike five times. <laughs> so I choose to do the hard, one of the hardest ones. I, I, I was with a great guy, uh, Angus, uh, who, who has, uh, he, he teaches people. He's very good at this and he, he was leading me. Um, but unfortunately just on the way back on the way, on the way I, I slipped, it was, weather was disastrous. We, we had to keep changing around. I slipped, I broke my collarbone, smashed my chin here, uh, eight stitches I needed, but I didn't stop. I continued. We, I finished 45 kilometers afterwards. Um, and we ended up actually doing 60 kilometers cause we, we had, cause the weather was so bad. We had to keep changing direction. And the hiking, we were supposed to go up dog's teeth, but we couldn't do it, it was too dangerous. So we, we had to go a different way. Um, we still went over the peak, but it was an amazing experience. A lot of people got involved, raised a load of money and way more awareness. Uh, and I know that it helped people. And I know actually particularly we helped uh, two individual women uh, who one had been sex, sex trafficked in Hong Kong. And we helped to get out uh, of that, which for me, I think, um, you know, really makes me uh, feel proud of doing, you know, doing so. And all the people who supported, all the people who are out there uh, who actually cared all over the world. I mean, you would not believe all over the world, people were giving money and giving encouragement and saying, you know, so that, that was a really good thing. And I'm going to do more of that. I'm doing another, I'm doing a bigger one. I'm doing 300 kilometers uh, in, in two months time, uh, again, for stop, but also with bringing in tails, which is, the dogs, because I, you know, they're, they're, they're both uh, rescue dogs. And uh, so we're doing 300 kilometers and 18,600 meters in elevation, which is the equivalent of, of climbing Mount Everest, Kilimanjaro and the Aiga in four days. Wow. Do you, you want to join? No. <laughs> come on, Darren. Come and join. No, no, you, look, you look fit. You can come and join with me. Let's pretend. Yeah. yeah but, but if you don't mind, I think even though the show is about real estate, yeah, uh, yeah. education, but I think sometimes I feel the industry is lacking the people behind it. What's going on, right? If you don't mind, I want to put the charity link. Uh, the I'd show. love, I'd love it if you brought the charity link. I mean, I think. I think there's. I think a lot of people in the industry are doing an amazing job. I mean, you 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 only have to follow it and be involved in it, and you see so many doing that, including hotels who are doing the sustainability side of things, and you know they're they're bringing the local community in. One one of the resorts that uh, I was involved in years ago, it's really changed the whole of the area in Cambodia. You know they've 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 uh, they set up a, a foundation and they've regenerated the sea they educated the people around there so there's a lot of amazing things way way more than I'm, I'm just an individual doing some you know some small some small things that are pushing my boundaries to to give me you know to give me uh, a goal to achieve but some of these guys are incredible and and we we also as a developer we're looking to do things like this with new developments that are coming through um, one, one development, which is called Snowdog Chalets, we're looking at, we'll look at helping the trees we cut down. We'll be looking to build, you know, to grow way more trees elsewhere. And uh, the, the other pro project, Rakowichi um, Residences, we're working with the Ainu, which is the local indigenous, uh, uh, local indigenous people of uh, Hokkaido. And we're working with them to looking at how we can help Hokkaido, the environment, and how we can bring that into uh, our project, uh, and and which is pretty cool as well, because the Ainu were a, are an amazing group, because they really, they're like, you know, very, as, as indigenous people, they're very similar to, you know, all around the world. They really environmentally look after the planet, and their whole process of living was around looking after the planet, and unfortunately, us as humans, who uh, we we don't we forget that sometimes. I didn't expect this, by the way. This is this is, this is great. I yeah, mean, I don't know what's going on, and I feel that that's something that the, the boys should be stronger in our industry. Yeah, so, I mean, it, I've got to say, Nick Nicholas Pullings, who's the founder of all of this and uh, the developer, he speaks Japanese. Um, he's an amazing visionary with all of this, and he's a guy who does things, which is pretty cool. 
And, um, it, you know, we discuss this and then he goes off and finds it and, and makes it happen, which is, it's really cool. The, the iNews side, we're really excited about that. It's, unfortunately, with COVID, it all got put on hold um, and we were quite far forward with it because last year was supposed to be the I, year of the iNews. But unfortunately, with COVID, it, it stopped traveling, it stopped things. So it became difficult for us to, to work with them to sort of try and promote that. But that's, I mean, the year of the iron, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's always the year, you know, to, to do it. It doesn't really matter. We'll just continue that as and when. So I think it would be great to talk more about Seiko, about what's going on there, your projects. And then to be frank, I'm kind of interested to learn about what's going on there too, because I've never been there in the summer. And then uh, we should go for uh, check it out. Yeah, no, that was great. Let's go. Should we go? Do you want some uh, before we head? Sure. Let's yeah, see. yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Here, yeah. a little bit of Japanese food, snacks. Thanks for watching. You know, majority of you don't stick around this far, so we're flattered and truly appreciate your attention. To return the favor, let us tell you our thought on this episode. This episode is quite insightful. Unlike other Density Insights videos, this episode focused more on how realty professionals adapt and continue doing business during the pandemic. We feel it's important to showcase the efforts Joe and his company have made to build an online presence, think outside the box, and try new things. Inspiration for the industry as a whole to reconsider its reservations on digital and digital marketing. In the next episode, we'll go more in depth on the projects Joe gets to deal with. We have a more detailed version of our thoughts in the show notes. Beside that, you can find more about the guests and all the tips and tricks we have mentioned in the show note too. Well, what do you think? Let us know in the comments section. Fun fact, do you know that more than 85% of you have subscribed to this show yet? Subscribe now to keep getting good stuff from us. Thanks for watching. What do you think of this episode? Please let us know in the comment below and be sure to hit the subscribe button to keep in touch with us for upcoming videos. But before we go, I want to give a big shout out to Patina Design Lab. They're the one who help us in making our brand, our direction, as well as these videos. They are a strategic design consultancy firm to help businesses with a wide range of design services, from industrial design, branding, graphic design, art direction, content creation, and many more. They are a very talented bunch, and I urge you to check out their website for their work. That's all for today and see you next time. Cheers.